So we are going to figure out the formulas for the derivative of a dot product and a cross product of two vectors. And this derivation is actually going to be very, very simple. It comes from this fact. Notice first of all when we're looking at the dot product, a dot b. We have a1b1 plus a2b2 plus a3b3. Notice in each one of those components, we have one number from a and one number from b that are multiplied together. This is a product of two components of a and b. The cross product formula is a little more complicated, but it follows the same rules. When we have a cross b, notice here we have a component of a and a component of b multiplied together. Same here, same here, same here, same here, same here. Every single part of these is a product of two components, one from a and one from b. So now we want to see how that plays out when we differentiate each of these products. Now remember, if we're taking the derivative of this product, we're assuming that the components a1, b1, a2, b2, and so on, are all going to be functions of some other variable t. So when we do this derivative, we can just take the derivative of each of these products with respect to t. The derivative of a1, b1 is going to be a1 prime b1, and then plus a1 b1 prime. That's just the product rule. If we do that again for the next part, a2 b2, we're going to get a2 prime b2 plus a2 b2 prime. And finally, we can do the same thing for the third component. So the formula that we have here is split into two colors that mark the categories we're looking at. First of all, we have a1 prime b1 plus a2 prime b2 plus a3 prime b3. Well, that's exactly what we would get if we started with this a dot b formula and put prime here, prime here, prime here. In other words, if we had a prime dotted with b, that is what we would get. So this first part is going to be the derivative with respect to t of a dotted with b since the derivative of a is going to give us a prime. When we look at the blue terms, notice the pattern is exactly the opposite. Instead of having all of the a terms differentiated, we have all of the b terms differentiated. a1, b1 prime, a2, b2 prime, a3, b3 prime. And that's the same thing as doing a dotted with b prime. Or in other words, a dotted with the derivative with respect to t of our b vector. So this is the formula for the derivative of a dot product. And notice it looks exactly the same as the product rule for ordinary functions. We do the first times the derivative of the second and the second times the derivative of the first. Now once we understand how the derivative of the dot product functions in this way, we can extend that same idea to the cross product. Again, in both cases we're taking one component from the first vector times one component from the second vector. And so we can split up the derivative in the same way, which is what I've done on the bottom here. This is the formula for the derivative of a cross product. And when we look at all of the red components, we're taking a part of that original cross product formula and going from a to a prime, a to a prime, a to a prime, and so on. The blue components are going from b to b prime, b to b prime, b to b prime. So we can do the exact same thing that we did in the dot product in this situation where we're looking at a cross product. This is going to equal the derivative with respect to t of a crossed with b. That's going to be all of those red components put together. And then we add a crossed with the derivative with respect to t of b. Notice in this case, it does matter what order we put the vectors in. The a is always going to come before the b, because remember, when we switch the components of the cross product, that will make it negative. So those are the formulas for the derivatives of the dot product and the cross product. And they function very similarly to the normal product rule when we're looking at ordinary derivatives. The reason behind that is that each of these products is just a bunch of ordinary products of functions added together. And so the product rule is going to function exactly the same way.